Now, we had started off our conversation on complex numbers by talking about what happens when we have polynomials that are equal to zero. So let's go back to that for a bit. And let's work on one particular case. Let's look at x cubed minus 8 is equal to zero. Now, we want to try and find out what the solutions for x are. So you may think, this is fairly easy. We just add 8 to both sides, take the cubed root of both sides, we get that x is equal to 8 to the 1 third power, which is just equal to 2. Done. Except here's the thing. We're not actually done. Before, in like the first video, I said that if, in general, if you have a polynomial of degree n and that's equal to 0, then there are going to be n different solutions. Here we have a polynomial of degree 3. So there should be three different solutions, but we only found one of them, x is equal to 2. So there are two other numbers that 1 cubed give us 8. Now you may rack your brain trying to think about that. You may think, well, what about negative 2? But negative 2 cubed will give you negative 8. So you may think harder and harder and eventually not really come up with anything. Because here's the deal. This is actually, the other two solutions are fairly unintuitive because the other two solutions aren't real. They're complex. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to learn how to try and take the complex roots of a number. So let's get started. And let's continue working with this example. Let's say that z is equal to 8. Our complex number z. The first step that we need to try and do to find out what the uh, complex roots of these are, is we need to write our number in polar form, which if you recall is just of the form z, z is equal to r times e, whoops, e raised to the i times theta. Now, what we need to do now is just try and figure out what r and theta are. So we can, one way we can do this is we can plot out our complex number on the complex plane. Here's the real axis, we can say z is equal to 8 is right here. And we know that the radial distance from uh, the origin to that point, r, that's just equal to 8. And we know that the angle that this point makes with the x-axis, or the independent variable axis, theta, that's just equal to 0, plus 2, whoops, 2n pi. Because we know that if we add any integer multiple of 2 of uh, two pi, we may go around like this complex plane a couple times, but we keep landing at this point here. So let's write our complex number in polar form using these two. So we say that z is equal to 8 e to the i, 0 plus 2 n pi, which we can simplify up as just 8 e to the i 2, whoops, 2n pi. Now, if you recall, e to raised to the i times 2n pi, that's just equal to 1. Well, let's keep it there for a bit. Because what we're going to do next is we're going to try and figure out what z to the 1 third power is. And we know that that's going to be 8 times e to the i 2n pi raised to the 1 third power. Now let's use our property of exponents to distribute out this exponent. That's just 8 to the 1 third power times e to the i 2n pi over 3 this time. So we can simplify this up by taking the principal cubed root because we know that our magnitude r is only like a positive real number. So we can say that z to the 1 third is just 2 times e to the i 2n pi over 3. Now here's the deal. We said that n could be any integer. And for the case when we just had 2 pi times n, we just kept going around in a circle getting to back to this one spot. Now if we say that n is an integer here, we keep the same like limits on n, we don't do one complete revolution. We do 2 pi over 3. So let's just write out what z will be for a couple of different ver uh, values of n. Let's have n here, make a nice little table. Z, one, three. So 
So when n is equal to zero, we just get that uh, two times e to the zero power, or just two. When n is equal to one, we get two times e to the i, two pi over three. When n is equal to two, we get two e to the i, four pi over three. Now here's a, now let's keep going on a little bit. When n is equal to three, we get two e to the i, six pi over three, which we can simplify. That's just two e to the i times two pi, basically three over, uh, six over three. And we know that e to the i two pi, that's just one. So we know that this is just two, the same number we had up here. And let's just going, let's keep going for one more. Let's see what happens when n is equal to four. We get two e to the i eight pi over three which we can simplify this up as well as just two e to the i two pi plus two pi over three. We can distribute this out and we can say that this is equal to two e to the i two pi times e to the i two pi over three. And we know that this is one, so we get back this original answer here, two times e to the i two pi over three. And if we keep going on for more and more ends, we find that we just keep repeating these three values right here. So let's plot these three values out on our complex plane. We have, the first one's easy to do, just z is equal to two. That's just right here. Now the next one is, uh, we have two e to the i, two pi over three. So we still have a radius of two, but now we have an angle of two pi over three. So it looks something like this, roughly around there. Same radius now, here we have the angle, two pi over three. Now let's do the last point. Uh, we have two e to the i, four pi over three. So we could think of it as four pi from here, or just an extra two pi from here but we get one point roughly around here, still same radius of two, but now this is an angle of two pi over three. And notice uh, in the original like cube root we had here, well, I'll go back one bit. Well, uh, notice if, uh, these were the three values that we just kept on repeating over and over again for different values of n. And they correspond to these three points right here. Now here's a couple things to keep in mind about these three points. The first is that they're equally separated. They have the same radius value, but they're all an equal angle apart from each other. This is two pi over three, this is two pi over three, and this actually is two pi over three. The next major point that I want to say is these are actually our well, th here, uh, when we took the cube root, we got three points on our complex plane. But we said earlier that for, like, this polynomial, we need three solutions. And here we go. These points are actually our three solutions, the three values of uh, the cube root of eight. Now let's just think back and, and think about how we actually got three different solutions. We originally wrote, it all goes back to uh, theta here. We originally wrote theta as just our initial angle, which just happened to be zero, plus two n pi. And originally the two n pi just meant we could, well, we could keep going around one complete revolution in this complex plane and keep landing at the same point here. But when we took this cube root, we, our angle changed to two n pi over three. Essentially saying we're every, for every n now, when n's an integer, we're not going a complete revolution around the circle. We're going a third of the way. So notice we're going a third of the way for a cubed root. And we'll find that we'll go like a fourth of the way for a fourth root, a fifth of the way for like the fifth root, etc. Because all these points are equally spaced uh, by like two pi over n, where n is like the root or the order. Now uh, let's just do one last step just to make everything nice and neat. Let's rewrite 
our three main solutions in Cartesian form. So we know what they are in polar form, let's just rewrite them. I'm just going to call the first one Z1. That's just fairly easy to write in Cartesian form because it's already in Cartesian form. Z1 is equal to 2. Now let's write our next solution. Let's say Z2 is equal to 2 e to the i 2 pi over 3. If you want to do this in Cartesian form, we can use our Euler's formula. So we can say that this is 2 times cosine of 2 pi over 3 plus i whoops, times sine of 2 pi over 3. Now, here we can just use some basic trig, cosine of 2 pi over 3, that's negative 1 half. Uh, sine of 2 pi over 3, that's radical 3 over 2. So we get that our second solution in complex form, sorry, in Cartesian form, is negative 1 plus i radical 3. And now we can put our third solution, which was 2 e to the i 4 pi over 3. So 2 e to the i 4 pi over 3. Let's rewrite this in, in Cartesian form. So 2 times cosine of 4 pi over 3 plus i times sine of 4 pi over 3. And then we can get that this is equal to 2 times negative 1 half plus, whoops, cos uh, sine of 4 pi over 3, that's minus ra uh, radical 3 over 2, so minus i radical 3 over 2. And we get that our third solution in Cartesian form is just negative 1 minus i radical 3. Now, one thing to keep in mind about this solution is that the two comp, well, Here's our normal solution that we got previously, and we have our two complex solutions. Now notice with our two complex solutions, they're actually complex conjugates of each other. And that's one trend that you may see over and over again, is just that when you get complex numbers in a solution, they typically come in pairs, a number and its conjugate. So there we go, we found the three cubed roots of 8. The normal, the real one, and the two complex ones. And just to really show that this is a cubed root of 8, let's just go out and let's just cube this one and see if we get 8. So we have negative 1 plus i radical 3 cubed. I'm just going to write that as negative 1 plus i radical 3 times negative 1 plus i radical 3 squared. And we can say that this is equal to, let's just do what the squared one first, negative 1 plus i radical 3 times negative 1 times negative 1 is just 1. Then we're going to get minus 2i radical 3. Then we're going to get uh, i radical 3 times i radical 3, which is just negative 3. And we can simplify this up by saying that this is equal to negative 1 plus i radical 3. Whoops. Uh, parentheses should be there, right? Uh, times, let's group all the reals and imaginary. So this is negative 2 minus 2i radical 3. And we can distribute this out. So negative 2 times negative 1, that's just 2. Uh, negative 2 times i radical 3, that's negative 2i radical 3. Uh, negative 1 times negative 2i radical 3, that's positive 2i radical 3. And i radical 3 times negative 2i radical 3, that's going to be positive 2 times 3. So these two terms cancel, we get 2 plus 2 times 3, which is just 2 plus 6, which is just 8. So we found that if we cube this complex number, we do in fact get 8. Or we can say that this complex number is the cubed root of 8. So there we have it. We're able to find the three cubed roots of 8. The one normal one, the two complex ones. We're going to carry this on with another example in the next video. And I'll hopefully see you there.